Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Dharma Geosphere. Uh, today I will be interacting with you on uh, the quantitative revolution which is the one of the most important topics in uh, the perspectives in uh, human geography because uh, there is a background to it, how it evolved from the spatial sciences and then it stood uh, as a um, very powerful tool for nearly uh, two decades uh, and then uh, it then tapered off and then again it got resurrected in the 90s and so it becomes an important topic because it covers quite a few uh, number of uh, years of its uh, existence. So the shift in the uh, geographic studies uh, in the late 50s and the early 60s involved uh, major changes, a uh, kind of uh, revolution which was brought about uh, by more precise and accurate ways of uh, judiciously using the um, mathematical and statistical analytical techniques for uh, uh, the development and evolution of uh, geography. So since um, uh, um, developing uh, geography in a very accurate and uh, precise uh, study needed uh, quantification, so uh, the quantification techniques became uh, indispensable for the evolution of geography the way it became uh, like that for physics and mathematics. So one instrument uh, which uh, brought out the changes from the regional geography to the ideographic geography, the systematic to nomadic geography was the quantitative techniques and the quantitative revolution by the increased use in mathematical and statistical techniques. Uh, quantitative revolution has developed during the 50s and 60s slowly replaced description with the explanation, uh, individual understanding with general laws and also the uh, main interpretations uh, with predictions. So uh, when you are writing a rounded good and want to write a good answer, please use uh, the uh, Gould's uh, quote regarding the quantitative revolution which I will show you in the uh, slides. Uh, that's very important. Try to write enriched, uh, well-rounded answers by quoting, by bringing in uh, the various concepts, what has happened before and how it actually uh, developed uh, during that stage and by uh, trying to analyze. Uh, so I'm giving you an essence of the, uh, the quantitative revolution, a quick guide for you to uh, immediately grasp and write. You don't have much time. You're already on uh, December 3rd. You already have a month and so. So, but uh, nothing to worry. You're all doing well and it's just few more topics that I'll be covering, but I'll cover all the topics. But uh, I'll give you only the essence so that it becomes very easy for you in examination point of view. So the growth of uh, the quantitative revolution was greatly influenced by three major uh, works, the uh, cybernetics and the theory of uh, games and uh, economic behavior and the third one was the human behavior and the principle of uh, uh, least effort. So uh, these three books are important right, to understand uh, what is there in this and how it influenced the um, quantitative revolution in geography. I will be showing you on, uh, in this slide. The quantitative revolution also uh, was easily adopted by many of the domains of uh, geography except of course uh, human geography because initially there was a feeling uh, from the human geographer that probably the quantitative um, methods are dehumanizing the uh, human geographic component of uh, geography but it was not so. Later on human geography also adopted uh, the quantitative techniques. So uh, in to sum up uh, the quantitative revolution actually offered a technique uh, that could be uh, hmm, that uh, theory could use and uh, develop uh, and also uh, improve uh, upon the theory and it had some uh, basis uh, the theory could go back and test uh, through the quantitative methods how robust that uh, theory is and how long it can sustain. So that is how quantitative revolution um, uh, became very important and it sustained uh, for a long time. But we will also try to understand uh, what were the demerits and how this quantitative revolution so well um, uh, flagged up but slowly also got tapered away and uh, finally lost its um, roots and then till 1990s when it again got uh, resurrected. So guys, um, I'll show you some slides 
uh, which will have the essence and the main points relating to quantitative revolutions and just let's go cracking. The shift in the focus of geographical studies in the 50s and 60s uh, involved a major change, a revolution in the nature of geographical work. And it became necessary uh, for uh, using precise and uh, accurate methods and uh, this could only be accomplished by using quantitative methods uh, since uh, accurate study uh, depends on quantification. So the all important instrument uh, for bringing about the required change uh, from moving away from the regional ideographic to systematic nomadic was the quantification from uh, more uh, generally referred to as the quantitative uh, revolution. So uh, this um, quantitative revolution did just did not uh, come up overnight. It was inspired by a very genuine need to make geography more scientific and uh, theoretical in uh, orientation backed up by evidence-based quantitative techniques. So uh, this satisfaction uh, with the ideographic, ge ideographic geography of uh, aerial uh, differentiation lay at its root and uh, as you all know that when we discussed about the spatial analysis and also the other topics we uh, understood what were the drawbacks of this uh, aerial differentiation and uh, so the quantitative revolution uh, came in it replaced description with explanation individual understanding with general laws and uh, interpretation with prediction so in other words uh, please be careful try to uh, remember this uh, gauls a quote uh, which is important and it will also uh, show uh, the examiner um, how good you are in uh, trying to grasp the essence of this quantitative So he says there was a sense of discovery and forging of breaking out of banal factual boxes erected by the old men and a sense of reaching out to scholars in fields which we never properly introduced. So uh, this is a very emphatic um, quote on how the quantitative revolution um, asserted itself as uh, one of the important uh, domains in geography as it evolved. Uh, so the incidence and uh, growth of quantitative revolution was greatly influenced by three major works, as I said, Theory of Games and Economic Behavior by Von Neumann, uh, who was a mathematician, and uh, the volume of uh, Cybernetics uh, by uh, Novot Wiener, um, and then uh, the Human Behavior and the Principle of uh, Least Effort by Zip. So while quantification was easily adopted in the study of uh, physical geography, geomorphology and the other disciplines as well, uh, the, there was a considerable uh, resistance was encountered by the uh, human geography uh, because they felt that probably the quantification is dehumanizing the human part of the geography. But it was not so. It slowly overcame uh, by the end of the 50s. Since around this time it has come to be widely recognized that a social science which recognizes random behavior at the microcosmic level and uh, the predictable order at the macrocosmic uh, level is a logical outgrowth of quantitative revolution. So quantitative revolution remained uh, to be important and it stayed with many of the social sciences including the human geography part of the geography. So quantification added point to the need and it offered a technique whereby theory could be developed and improved upon. So some of the demerits, um, just um, keep a note, four or five of the uh, demerits. So um, one of them was as I already said that uh, some of the human geographers were trying to feel uh, that it is dehumanizing the geography. And uh, some of the individuals also believed that uh, discipline was increasingly about models and decreasingly about understanding the meaning of uh, everyday life or describing different peoples and regions. Of course, this was a major drawback because the human interface uh, is the most important when it comes to geography, but that was uh, getting a little uh, mechanical and uh, so that's how quantitative revolution became a threat to the human interface uh, which was so essential for uh, 
the development of geography. And then uh, the static sticks were incapable of uh, describing or unlocking the mechanisms and structures that created empirically observed differences between social groups, genders and regions. So this part is also very important and it slightly got uh, neglected because the social groups and or the there was no uh, way of uh, gender mainstreaming. You cannot have one particular theory and then uh, try to quantify it without understanding uh, whether it, the beneficiaries are women or men. So this was another uh, drawback of uh, blindly uh, quantifying it. And for this reason, uh, three prominent uh, critics emerged. We'll be uh, slowly understanding uh, is humanism, humanistic geography, and the behavioral geography, as well as the uh, structuralism. Structuralist uh, geographers, they believe that many of them were actually from the in, under the influence of uh, Marxism. They recognized that the social uh, spatial relations and observed conditions were the result of the production process, that is basically meaning uh, the uh, profit process. So humanism sought uh, a kind of a reposition of uh, humans and their experience at the center of the discipline in an attempt to unpack the meaning of uh, the uh, triangle or the triad of space, place and region. This was very important and behavioralism was an attempt to insert people into the existing model by abandoning uh, rational uh, economizing uh, principles of human behavior and ins uh, inserting the concept of uh, bounded rationality. This bounded rationality is very important when it comes to the uh, behavioralism. When we deal with behavioralism, I will try to um, explain how this changed the perspectives in geography. So in concert, uh, these three dominant critiques as well as the later emergent uh, post-structural approaches ushered in a very legitimate collection of uh, qualitative uh, research methodologies. So from quantification, slowly moving uh, based on uh, structuralism, humanism and behaviorism towards the qualitative aspects. So in many aspects, the qualitative methods has emerged as a counter to the epistemological uh, hegemony, of, uh, hegemony of this uh, quantitative revolution which actually is so assured and revolutionized and was trying to sweep away many of uh, the earlier uh, and the important concepts of the human interface with the environment and the human interface of various elements of geography. So uh, that is one. So uh, but then um, that is how uh, quantitative revolution uh, lost its ground and because it was not able to uh, internalize the uh, human aspects and the um, human interface left uh, unattended. So, but then um, once it tapered off after the 60s because of these uh, drawbacks, there was uh, also a resurgence uh, in, uh, during the 90s because quantification of uh, geography uh, was, ex uh, was very important as a primary motivation was the expansion of geotechnical applications, particularly the geographic information systems, the GPS and remote sensing and the growing dominance of geotechnics all over the world. So there was no other option for the geography also to adopt these modern geotechnical uh, methods to of course, GIS is so important. You can see the uh, geographic landforms and the physical landscape in three dimensions, and it is very um, easy to um, analyze and uh, predict. So the new quantitative geography was much more articulative because it brought in the spatially rigorous versions of the uh, traditional techniques such as, such as geographically weighed regressions which were being earlier used but very um, selectively and very judiciously. So concomitantly geographers were arguing for more nuanced application of established techniques such as expansion by placing quantitative methods within the alternative uh, epistemological frameworks. So it's always um, good to make a balance of uh, quantitative methods as well as uh, the other traditional methods and then see what best works in a particular situation. So consequently, the simple quantitative plus the qualitative dichotomy that initially characterized contemporary geographical did not exist. 
So today, uh, as we see from the 90s, geographers often use a balanced mixture of intensive and extensive methodologies to explore the many facets of everyday life, including the interface of uh, humans in whatever um, geography is doing. So indeed, geographers have adopted an approach that em emphasizes complementarity of quantitative and qualitative approaches. So this is how um, whatever question related to quantitative revolution comes, we should be able to sum up. Always strike a balance at the end and just go and crack it when you are writing the conclusion. So in the future, quantitative methods will continue to be used, no doubt, and become more spatially nuanced and be more integrated into the research regime. So consequently, the simple uh, uh, in the future, quantity uh, will continue to be used in this kind of a way wherein there is a balance of intensive and extensive methods and quantitative and qualitative methods and regional and uh, systematic methods. So uh, that is uh, what is about quantitative uh, geography. I uh, try to make it brief uh, to the point and I have only given you the essence. Don't uh, worry about uh, reading anything. I have captured all the important points from all the three books. Read standard books. Please do not read street notes and get um, carried away. That will not take you anywhere. So read standard books. I have already given you the essence. Just pick up this essence. Plug in. Keep listening. You will understand how actually geography is slowly getting evolved. Then there is a lot of confusion. I have seen some of these... Uh, so-called notes shown by my uh, students that they have mixed up positivism with the quantitative revolution, spatial analysis with quantitative revolution and it's all hotspots in some of the places. But don't worry about that, just stick to uh, this. This is nothing but what has been given in these three books and uh, nothing else. I'll just sum, summed up or given you the essence. So just listen to it a couple of times and you will get it and then we'll move on. I'll take up positivism uh, and then we'll move, we'll move uh, probably with much more uh, speed uh, so that uh, by the time, just before the exam, you're thorough in all that. Guys, it's a golden chance for you for all, the, all of those who have created clear the prelims. Geography will get you the rank. Geography optional will get you the rank. So um, stay focused, work hard, it's just another month and then go and very calmly and very systematically uh, write the answers. Okay guys, all the best. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy and always be happy. Bye.